In this video, we will focus more on the graphical nature of exponential functions. This is AP Precalculus Topic 2.3. If you appreciate the content, please give it a like. Number 11. The graph of the function f is shown above. Which of the following could be an expression for f? Here's the model for an exponential function. If the a value is positive, the curve is above the x-axis. If the a value is negative, the curve is below the x-axis. Obviously, the curve is above the x-axis, so the a value should be positive. So option b and d are out. The b value determines whether the curve is getting closer to zero as we go from left to right, or whether the curve is approaching infinity. The fact that the curve is approaching zero as x approaches infinity means that the b value must be between zero and one. So that's going to be the case for option c. Notice that when the b value is greater than one, as in option a, the curve is getting further away from zero like this. Or if the a value was negative, but the b value was greater than one, it might look like this. Number 12, the exponential function g is defined by g of x equals a times b to the x power, where a and b are positive constants. The table gives values of g of x at selected values of x. Which of the following statements is true? Looking over the answer choices, we need to decide if g demonstrates exponential decay or exponential growth. In all cases, a is greater than zero. We can tell because we have all positive values. So we need to see if b is between zero and one, in which case we are looking at exponential decay, or whether b is greater than one. That's when you have exponential growth. For equal length input value intervals, the b value will be the common ratio between the output values. So let's divide each output value by the previous output value to find the value of b. 24 divided by 72 reduces to 1 third. Similarly, 8 divided by 24 is 1 third and so on. So that's your b value, and we can see that the b value is between zero and one. So this is exponential decay, and the answer is A. 13, which of the following exponential functions demonstrates exponential growth? Exponential growth looks like this. The curve must be above the x-axis, so the a value must be positive. That means the answer cannot be b or d. In addition, exponential growth means that the b value must be greater than one. Two thirds is less than one, so the answer is not a. Three over two is 1.5, so the answer is c. 14, the end behavior of an exponential function h is described by the limit statements above. Which of the following could be h of x? Let's use the limit statements to draw a sketch of the exponential function. The limit as x approaches negative infinity of h of x equals negative infinity. This means as we go to the left, h of x is falling, falling, falling. So that curve is going to look something like this. As we go to, towards the left, the function is falling. Automatically, I have drawn it so that the limit as x approaches infinity of h of x equals zero. In other words, notice that as we go to the right, h of x is approaching zero. So we can make our answer choice based on this graph. First, notice that the curve falls below the x-axis. So we know that the a value must be negative. So that means the answer is not a, and the answer is not c. So now we have to decide whether the b value is between zero and one, or 
will the B value be greater than 1? Be careful. Some students assume that when a function is increasing, the B value will be greater than 1. But that is only true when the curve is above the x-axis. If I had a function that was increasing from left to right above the x-axis, then yes, the B value would be greater than 1. This would be exponential growth. This orange curve might be the graph of y equals 3 times 3 over 2 to the x power. The B value is greater than 1, so yes, the curve is increasing. But what happens if we make the A value negative? The B value is still greater than 1, but now this is a reflection over the x-axis. So even though the B value is greater than 1, this curve is actually decreasing. Notice that both curves are getting further away from the x-axis, further away from 0. So we could say that when the B value is greater than 1, the curve gets further away from 0 as we go towards the right. If the curve gets closer to 0 from left to right, then the B value is between 0 and 1. That's the situation that we have here. So which one of these has a B value between 0 and 1? This one does. So the answer is D. 15. The exponential function k is defined by k of x equals 5 times 2 over 7 to the x power. Which of the following statements about k is correct? Let's draw a sketch. Because the a value is positive, we know the curve will be somewhere above the x-axis. Because the b value is between 0 and 1, this is going to be exponential decay, getting closer and closer to 0 from left to right. In other words, from left to right, k of x is decreasing, and we can see that the curve is concave up, right? It's the left side of a bowl shape. Decreasing and concave up means that the answer is C. Number 16, selected values of the function f are shown in the table above. Which of the following claim and explanation statements best fits these data? The answer choices mention either equal length input value intervals or equal length output value intervals. Let's investigate the length of the input value intervals. The input values are increasing by 1, so we do have equal length input value intervals. What about the output values? The output values do not show a constant rate of change. So the answer cannot be A because A says that uh, F is linear because output values have a constant rate of change over equal length input value intervals. We do not see a constant rate of change, so the answer is not A. If F was linear, we would see a constant rate of change on these output values. So the answer is not B because it does say that F is linear. This whole description is just not a thing. Option C says that f is exponential because the output values are proportional. So let's check the ratios. If the output values are proportional, there should be a common ratio. Let's take each output value and divide by the previous output value to find the ratio. 2 divided by 1 half is the same as 2 times 2. You multiply by the reciprocal. So this ratio is 4. 8 divided by 2 is also 4. 32 divided by 8 is also 4. And 128 divided by 32 is also 4. This common ratio does indicate that the output values are proportional. Let's call the common ratio R. If the common ratio R is positive, then we are looking at an exponential function. So the answer is C. To be clear, proportional input values do not give us an exponential function. Hey guys, don't forget to like and subscribe, but also if you found this video helpful, there's a lot more where that came from. You can click the upper link, which will take you to the whole unit playlist, or you can click the lower link, 
which will take you to the next video in the playlist. See you there.